Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This week's tutorial is how to get better at bird photography. And in the past, I've talked about the three P's of bird photography, patience, perseverance, and practice. Today, I'm gonna to give you three really specific areas to practice, and I think your bird photography will improve. Bird photography is hard. It's probably one of the most difficult forms of photography. You're trying to catch great light, bird action, uh, all at the same time. Here I've caught the decisive moment with this eagle walking down the beach, and it looks like it is kind of almost floating on the sand a little bit. His talons are just in there, and that's all about timing and getting that one second shot. And so that's being ready, which is part of practice. If you practice a lot, you can be ready to get shots like that. Here again, timing, catching the splash of this sandhill crane. And it's about practicing so that you're ready at these decisive moments so that you can get a great shot. So how do we do that? The number one way is we want to be able to change the shutter speed, the ISO, the aperture, and move our focus points around. And we want to be able to change exposure compensation if we use aperture priority mode. And so here, if I'm shooting in manual mode, I use the back button to change my shutter speed. And I use the ISO button to change my ISO. I use the front dial on the camera to change the aperture. I can change the three elements of the exposure triangle just with one hand, with my index finger, I change my aperture, with my thumb, I change my um, shutter speed, and then with my index finger, I can change the ISO. And I don't have to take my eye off the camera. Now this is something that I want you to practice at home. You can do this on a rainy day, you can do this in the evening, you can do this while you're watching a football game. But the more you practice being able to change the exposure controls at home when you're warm and comfortable, the easier it will be when you go outside. So the other thing we want to be able to do is to change our composition in camera. So right now I have my one single focus point set up right smack dab in the middle. I use this if birds are far away because I want to get the bird as sharp as possible and the lenses are sharpest right in the middle. But if I want to move this around to other points to make a composition, I can use the joystick up here or I can use these arrow indicators, these, these movement indicators on this control dial here. Practice how to do this at home so that you can do this without taking your eye off the camera. You can concentrate on where the bird is and your fingers just know how to move and make those changes. Now, if you're in aperture priority mode, it's a little bit different. My back dial changes my aperture and my front dial changes my exposure compensation. Now I can still use the ISO button here to change my ISO if I need to. I can still change my shutter speed by changing my ISO. Practice all of these things so that you're able to make these changes quickly and efficiently in the field without taking your eye off the frame. Now the next thing to think about and to practice a lot is panning with the bird. So here I'm panning with these sandhill cranes and that's actually a cornfield in the background, but you can't tell that because I'm panning with the birds. I'm moving my camera as the birds fly by. But this is something you can practice. Go to a local park, find some gulls or something that are flying by, and then just practice following them along, keeping them in the center of the frame. With this rough-legged hawk, I did the same thing. I panned with the bird, so I'm following it along, I'm focusing on it, and then when it gets to the right position, I push the shutter button. So pan with the birds, wait until the shot develops because the background color is really important to make this bold silhouetted image. Just wait a little bit, focus on the birds, let up, focus on the birds, use that intermittent focusing technique, but pan with the birds, keep practicing panning with the birds. Now. The other thing to practice at home is knowing how to find things in your menu system. And everybody says that the new mirrorless cameras are complicated. Well, they're complicated because you have more options. But let's break it down. On the left side here, we have seven different menu systems, okay? And those are pretty straightforward. Now, each one of these seven menu systems has its own little area here. So that's the first camera setting, second camera setting, movie settings, here's the playback settings, here's the custom settings, and that's where there's the most options. And then here's some kind of mechanical things that you wanna use, you know, 
formatting your card and stuff, and then My Menu where you can put the most often used things. But here's the custom menu. So we've got all the autofocus here, the A1, A2, A3, A4. These are sort of the autofocus things. This is the back button, B1, B2 is how to set up the things there. C is continuous focusing. The D ones are about live boost, then we got histograms. But just go through this and look at each one of these multiple times. Try to say, okay, look, there's seven options on the on the left side. The only one of those with subcategories is the custom menu. Go through it and practice it. If you spend a couple of hours with your menu system, you're gonna have the hang of it and you're gonna understand it a lot better. Hey, if you want to learn even more about bird photography, check out my website, timboyerphotography.com. I do workshops throughout the Western United States. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this week, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.